when it comes to optimizing your mobile internet connection, speed tests are a lot more important than bars. We're going to share some tips and tricks about optimizing your mobile internet settings and understanding your speed test results. Hi there, I'm Cherie with the Mobile Internet Resource Center. And I am Chris. And we are focused on helping our viewers and cruisers get their best mobile internet connectivity on the road or water. And optimizing your mobile internet connectivity, whether you're using cellular, Wi-Fi at a campground or marina or satellite, is a important part of setting up at each location that you go to. And so for us, you know, of course we pay attention to the signal strength and the bars and everything, but primarily what we focus on is running speed tests and tweaking our performance to get either the best download performance or the best upload performance, depending on our needs. And well, we're in the middle of doing a whole lot of that right now because here we are in Benson, Arizona at one of our winter home bases and we're testing a whole lot of gear and running a whole lot of speed tests. So this seems like a good time to share with you some of the tips about how we do it, how we interpret the results, and where we go with that. But first, why a speed test and not just looking at your bars? As Chris said, they are different. The bars that you might see on your phone or your jetpack or hotspot device is giving you an indication of the signal strength. And signal strength isn't always directly correlated to the data performance that you'll get when you're trying to surf the internet or download movies or anything like that. And for that, you have to go and do something to measure the actual performance that you're getting. And that's where speed tests can play a role. Now, just keep in mind, a speed test is just a snapshot at this exact moment in time as to what the current performance that you're getting. It's not necessarily indicative of what it might be an hour for now or how things might change because there's a lot of things that can impact your cellular data performance in particular and also with Wi-Fi and other modes of getting online. For more on that, go to our guide at mobileinternetinfo.com slash performance, where we have gone in more depth into all the things that can impact, especially your cellular data speeds. Now, when we are speed testing, there are a whole bunch of speed testing applications and websites that you can use. The ones that we tend to settle on in our own testing are the speed test apps, both by Ookla and also by Cloudflare. Another popular one is Fast.com, which is run by Netflix. And with that one, just keep in mind, it is testing a video file from Netflix's server, which is going to give you different results when you're using other speed test apps because it will also indicate any speed throttling that your data plan might have applied to it. So for instance, if you're, if you're on a data plan that is maybe has 480p resolution video caps on it, you'll see those speed tests on fast.com reflected as around 1.5 megabit per second, whereas on speed test apps by Ookla or other options out there, you might be getting 30 or 40 megabits per second, and that's what can account for those differences. So just what is a speed test app and what is it doing? So basically when a speed test is running, it is trying to measure the connection speed between your computer or your device or your tablet or anything and a server somewhere on the internet. It does this by sending a file, a data stream from your device up and then another one down. So it measures both the download and upload speed. And then along the way, it actually gets a few other bits of data uh, to help indicate well, what's your performance actually like. And so here, Taking a look at the um, speed test app by Ookla, the information that it gives you, the primary thing it will give you is your download speed in uh, megabits per second usually. And that's uh, you know, one of the most prime things that people need to see to understand their internet connection is just how fast is data coming to you. It's kind of about how fast is your web page is loading, how fast do the video files stop buffering and get to where you need to go. And you know, like right here, I just got 87 megabits per second on AT&T. That is an exceptionally good speed. That that feels as as wonderful to surf at speeds like that. Um, but even down 20 megabits per second still feels pretty good. And even all the way down to 5 megabits per second, as long as we're not trying to do 4K video streaming, is still pretty darn usable. Once you get below 5 megabits per second, you're really starting to think, I need to find a better connection. And once you're down below 1, it starts to get really painful. So keep that in mind for the download speeds. Now upload is not usually as critical for a lot of the things most people do online um, because we're primarily consuming content, 
But if you are doing things that are two-way video in particular, like Zoom videos or YouTube broadcastings, or you're doing a lot of big file uploads, upload performance actually might matter more than download, and it sometimes makes sense to sacrifice download speed to get better upload speed. And that is sometimes where we're doing our most speed test and tweaking is trying to pay attention to the upload speeds. Here, I'm getting just three megabits per second. So despite that really huge download speed, the upload speed's kind of kind of marginal. Three is good for most normal usage, but if I'm doing a Zoom conference, I might really want to have five. If I've got a big YouTube upload that's got need to get done, I might try to get together and get to full 20 megabits per second or even faster to get an upload done faster. Now, when upload speed drops below one megabits per second, this is like kind of a, a warning flag for me when I'm doing speed testing, is below one megabits per second, it starts to mean the connection is looking unreliable, and particularly if it's below 512 kbits per second or even way below that. So even if you're having fast downloads, that means the tower is not hearing a lot of what you're sending back, and that can indicate a very unreliable connection. So a fast but unreliable connection is usually not a good thing. So slow uploads is a sign of unreliability. One of the other critical things you'll get out of a speed test is the ping time. This is the time between a data packet going from your computer to the server, the speed test server, and back to you. Lower ping time means things are more responsive. On a satellite, a geostationary satellite connection, 500 millisecond ping times, that's a half second round trip delay, makes doing a lot of things online feel like you are walking through molasses. Um, very, very slow and unresponsive. A lot of you know, 4G cellular might be between 30 and 50 milliseconds. That feels pretty good. 5G is getting to 20 milliseconds and potentially getting even better over time. Those are, are great latencies. If I'm starting to see latencies over a cellular connection that is more like 100 or 200, that's again another sign of the connection is likely to be unreliable and it's having issues and it's dropping connections or it's very congested. So if I'm starting to see latencies over 500, that's probably a connection I don't even want to bother with. I'm going to move on and try and find something else. Now, you'll get two other pieces of data from the speed test app, um, the Oopla one that most other apps don't give you. There's jitter, which is the um, value that is how much the ping time is varying depending on like how loaded the connection is. So a big jitter kind of indicates a sluggish connection. Um, and then Sometimes some data, some serv speed test servers will give you a packet loss. That's how much of your, basically your mail, your connections between you and the server get dropped in progress. If you see a, even a, a number there, more than two or three percent, again, that's an unreliable connection and one that you probably don't want to trust. And you either want to start optimizing it, making changes to your antennas or your routers or your carrier plans, or you know, find some other way online if you're dealing with an unreliable connection you cannot trust. So when you're actually conducting your speed test, you want to isolate as many variables as you can so that you can test whatever your signal enhancing strategy is. For instance, if you're testing different antennas, or maybe you're testing two carriers against each other, you want to be able to know that you're getting the data that you want, and you want to know what you are testing for when you're setting up for recording the speed test. So first thing is if you are connected over cellular on your smartphone and that's where you're running your speed test app, you click here and go, go, you are testing the speeds that your phone is receiving. If you want to test like perhaps this connection that your mobile hotspot device is getting, or maybe you're using a router like a Pepwave router or MoFi or Insti Connect, then you want to connect over Wi-Fi or Ethernet if you have an option like to a laptop to those connections and then test from there. That way you are getting the speeds that these devices are getting, not the device connected itself. And do keep in mind, you will get different results. Even if my phone is on AT&T and my hotspot's on AT&T, the modems inside might be very different or they might be connecting in different ways, which is where you want to be able to optimize your setup. So it's quite common that if you have a very advanced smartphone and a much older hotspot or router or a modem that's older or not as advanced, you'll get slower speeds on the hotspot device. You also need to keep in mind the connection that you're using between your smartphone and the device you're connecting. There is a wireless hop if I am connecting to this over Wi-Fi, and that wireless hop itself 
will add to some of the speed performance that I am seeing. And if you're in a really congested Wi-Fi area, maybe I have a lot of neighbors around that are broadcasting their own local area Wi-Fi networks, especially over 2.4 gigahertz spectrum, that might be con causing congestion that will be in that test speed test result, and I'm not just getting the speed test result of the cellular connection that I might be testing. Do try to be consistent in your testing. If you're testing multiple devices, hotspots, routers, different carriers, keep that distance if you're over Wi-Fi very similar as well because the distance that Wi-Fi has to travel also can impact your performance. And if you have the option of using an Ethernet or hardwired connection, you can eliminate that wireless hop altogether and focus just on the router or hotspot and its cellular connection. Now one of the results that you're going to see on your speed test is a server. And this doesn't have anything to do with how your internet traffic is being routed in general. So like when you're streaming Netflix and things like that, this isn't the server that it's going to. This is the server that the speed test app is using to send its sample data to and back to measure against. And it tries to pick by default, the one that is closest in networking terms, so the least amount of hops and congestion to get to, so that it can get an accurate reading back and forth for you to get those results. And if you're getting inconsistent results a lot, sometimes just switching the speed test server might be the issue. Sometimes there might be another one that's giving more reliable, consistent results. And we also do recommend that once you find a speed test server that you want to use, uh, use that one consistently for all of your testing at the current location that you're at. So if you're testing different hotspots, different carriers, different antenna setups, that might take you several minutes to get all those speed test results. You want to make sure you have that consistency. So that's one of the variables that you can rule out is not having that speed test server change all the time unless you want it to. And most apps allow you to go into the settings and change which server is being used. And of course, each speed test you do is just a snapshot of the current conditions between your cellular device and that speed testing server, and things can change a lot either on how your device is connecting to a cellular network or local area conditions like Wi-Fi congestion. So to get a better snapshot, if you can take multiple pictures, i.e. run multiple speed tests over a, you know, a couple minute period, you might be able to get a better feeling for how the connection is doing. And we do record those. We can actually use a spreadsheet to record the data so that we can actually see an average of what the speeds are. And once we feel we got a good average, then we're good. If you're getting a lot of inconsistency, that's where you want to start bringing in your optimizing. Maybe your device supports band locking, or you need to bond your connection, or bring in different antennas or things like that. That's where you might want to try to stabilize your connection or try those other speed test servers to see if those are the variables. But the other point to keep in mind is each speed test that you are running is sending a data file, a chunk of data. And if you have a capped data plan, it is eating away at that capped data. And the faster your connection, the bigger the data file that is being sent to get a reliable and accurate reading. So do limit the amount of speed testing that you do so you don't blow through any data caps that you have just on speed testing because after all you probably want to use your data for more fun things like surfing the internet, watching videos, or maybe even getting some work done. Now it can undeniably be fun to try and tweak your performance, adjust settings, use different gear to get the biggest possible speed test numbers you can. But well, I do want to remind you to focus on your actual real goals, which is having a good, reliable, all-around connection. So don't necessarily spend all of your time tweaking and speed testing and optimizing when you can be enjoying the internet. Once you get it good enough, well, that's probably good enough. But again, this is the first tool to assure yourself that you have a connection that you can trust is to dive in and do some speed testing. Now there's a lot more to this around optimizing your connection and testing your connection. We have more tips and information and uh, have more detail on how to understand the results you see in our guide at uh, mobileinternetinfo.com slash testing. So check us out there. These videos are brought to you by our premium members, our mobile internet aficionados. They make it possible for us to track this news and create these videos. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel, or better yet, consider becoming a member yourself.